What's up guys, Steven here, one, two, and two, and it's List Day. Ah yes, List Day, and today we're gonna be looking at the top 10 weirdest Monster Aborns in Yu-Gi-Oh. Monster Aborns a very important card in the history of the game. This normal spell card allows us to special summon one monster from either player's graveyard free of charge. And it's that versatility and unrestricted access to the graveyard that has made the card spend some time on and off the ban list. Summoning a monster from the graveyard completely devoid of any kind of catch in a game where basically summoning monsters is the main priority of a player it's extremely good. So Konami has done its darndest to print other cards, spells, and traps that summon monsters from the graveyard with weird restrictions and things in order to try to make them fair and balanced. So without further ado, these are the top 10 weirdest MRBs. Not NRBs. An NRB is something entirely different. Branch. Or brunch. <laughs> Avocado Toast is a continuous spell card that has the following effect. When a fusion monster on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one of the materials used to make said fusion and special summon it to your side of the field. Uh, it fails to say one of yours? That's interesting. I'm just realizing that now. Obviously what makes this Monster Reborn card really interesting is because it is completely landlocked to a fusion monster. If that fusion monster dies by any fashion, you get one of the materials back. In order to kind of like, I don't know, as a rebate, I suppose. The issue you're running into though, it is a continuous spell card that requires a thing to happen. In this case, a very specific thing. So you're going to find that this is most of the time just a do nothing card. It's going to sit on the board and basically hope something wrong happens. That's terrible. And because of that, this isn't actually very good. Not only is it strange, but it also, it, it's kind of bad. <laughs> I do wonder though, if you killed an opponent's fusion monster, do you get one of their things? Also, it can miss timing. <laughs> Fun. Ugh. Number nine is Black Garden. I guess Black Garden, a card you probably forgot even did this. Black Garden is a field spell that says whenever a player summons a monster, the opposite player gets a rose token. It's a level 2 with 800 attack and defense, Dark Plant Monster. All other monsters summoned except those rose tokens has their attacks cut in half. There is FTKs you can do with the thing, and that's kind of funny. But it does have a second effect, one we actually care about for this list. You can target a monster in your graveyard and special summon it as long as the monster in the graveyard's attack equals the attack of all current plant monsters on the field. You destroy the field spell and you destroy all those plant monsters and summon the monster. That was in the graveyard. Okay. Okay, I'm assuming the idea is that you are playing some sort of Akiza plant spam synchro deck and you play all the tokens and then you use the tokens on the field on either player's field to blow up and summon a thing that was in your graveyard. However, that means that the monster in your graveyard must have an attack power that is a multiple of 800, which is really, really specific. 1600 is pretty average level four attack power, so I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. The issue is it's gotta be all the plant monsters on the field, not just a couple of them. So it not only requires the monster in your graveyard a very specific attack power, it has to match a very specific specific board state. Specific. If you're playing other plant monsters, I guess you're you're allowing yourself to wiggle this around a little bit, but that's that's even more of it. I forgot it even did this because that is never going to happen. <laughs> what a strange and specific thing in order to allow us to summon a guy from our grave. Number eight is Guts of Steel. Balls of Steel here. I've got balls of steel is a normal spell card with the following effect. Select three scrap monsters from your graveyard. Your opponent picks one, special summons it to either side of the field, and then banishes the other two. Now you might be thinking, why would your opponent ever just give it to you when they could give it to themselves? Well, uh, Scrap Searcher here nukes the board when he hits the field. So I guess the idea is that you, you dumped Scrap Searcher to the grave and then you're like, all right, either you, you give it to, to me and I get a free body or you give it to yourself so I don't get it, but then it kills all this crap on your field. So it's like a Sophie's Choice thing going on. And I think Scrap Searcher doesn't blow up your own scraps. But yeah, you're, you're putting your opponent in a scenario where either choice is kind of crappy. That is certainly weird for a Monster Reborn card to do. Yes, the utility is kind of neat, but... The fact that you are kind of putting your next play into your opponent's hands is just a strange thing for a card to do. Number seven is Reincarnation Wave, a normal trap card. Activate this only when your opponent declares a direct attack. <laughs> oh, here we go. Select one synchro monster in your graveyard with a level 
equal to or less than the monster that's directly attacking you. The battle damage you take from the attack is halved, and at the end of the damage step, you special summon the synchro monster that's in your graveyard. Okay, so it's a weird combination of Call of the Haunted, Counter Gate, and it's landlocked to synchro monsters. Not only is the card, um, bad because it requires an extremely specific game state and your opponent to do a thing both of which will just mean that it's always dead it's also a trap card it's it's slow so the card freaking sucks it's incredibly disrespectful but it's also very strange. The fact that it's landlocked to synchros is really weird. This could summon anything from your graveyard with the same restrictions and it would still not be very good. But the fact that it's landlocked to synchros is, is quite strange. Not only that, it doesn't have the common decency to absorb all of the battle damage because you're, you're never going to be able to use this thing anyway. It would have been really cool that when you did, you at least didn't take any damage. <laughs> but nah, you, you still take the damage. And like, that's assuming that the monster your opponent's attacking you with directly has a level to begin with, which is becoming increasingly more of a problem so yeah number six is my personal favorite on the list super hippo carnival super hippo carnival is a quick play spell card that allows you to special summon one hip hippo from your deck or graveyard Stop around. <laughs> what am i even looking at and you have the option to then fill the rest of your monster zones with hippo tokens. Level 1 Earth Beasts have no attack, no defense, and they cannot be tributed, like, at all. Even for, like, a card effect or a summon. Do doesn't matter. You can't tribute them. Your opponent can only attack hippo tokens for the rest of the turn, so there's some interesting battle protection there. And you cannot special summon from your extra deck as long as you control a hippo token. Which means the card is basically scapegoat that requires a garnet. However, because you can't special summon from your extra deck, you can't even use them for link summoning. I've tried to build Hippo TK with this card so many times, and the fact that it summons from the deck or graveyard means that that Hip Hippo can just keep coming back again and again and again. Not only does it get them out of your deck, it also gets them out of the graveyard. Neat. Oh, it also gets them from your hand too. Uh, I think I might have forgotten to mention that. So it doesn't matter, the Garnet doesn't Garnet so much. I love the card, I love the fact that it doesn't care what Hip Hippo is, and I love the fact that it just spams the board with tokens. I just wish I knew what the intent of the card was. The best thing you can do is some sort of weird leeching the light play where you like, I don't know, you, 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 you make just a humongous big number token and then <laughs> that's not very good. You just can do it. One day though, one day. All right, number five, bonding, D2O. Oh boy, I am recording this after the rest of the stuff because I realized after I had signed out that I forgot to record it. So let's hope all my numbers aren't screwed up. If they are, that's why. <laughs> this normal spell card has the following effect. Tribute to Duo Turi, Duo Turion. I can't read that from here. And one Oxygeton in your hand or face up on your field, special summon a water dragon or water dragon cluster from your hand deck or graveyard. Hmm. This thing is treated as a uh, special summoning the card with bonding H2O. And that that's for water dragon because that thing actually requires bonding H2O in order to do it. And because it summons from the graveyard, it is technically a monster reborn card, but it can summon from the deck and, and, and hand too. So that's, that's good. I, that's actually cool. I like that. Nice. And if water dragon or water dragon cluster is sent from the field to the graveyard while this thing's in your graveyard, you can add this thing back to your hand. So it's kind of like a, a, a Shadal fusion, but not a fusion summon. I guess. And the the two things you make this with, the that uh, the dinosaurs, <laughs> the duotarian, it searches this thing, so there's 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 synergy there. You need to build a deck around this. You need to make a water dragon deck. But but there is some synergy within and of itself that the archetype is it it is there. So it is at least possible to do so. Is the card weird? Yeah, because it's it's basically saying, "Oh, you can summon from your graveyard, but you got to do chemistry first." <laughs> Just, I thought we were playing Yu-Gi-Oh, not homework. Yeah, so you got chemistry class here, and then you then next period is math class with this thing. This card's just very strange, uh, although I do like the fact that it's uh, it's very themed. That's cool, and it's like and it's like a, it's like a beaker or a test tube bee thing, cause cause science. Get excited. Yeah. Okay. This one's weird because uh, I don't know what's going on. It's a it's an odd mix of stuff. Tachyon Chaos Hole. That's a lot to unpack. What do? This normal trap card has the following effect. 
When a face-up Galaxy XC monster you control is destroyed by an opponent's attacking monster or by a card effect your opponent uses and sent to the graveyard, destroy as many face-up cards your opponent controls as possible and then banish them. So it's basically a humongous bottomless trap hole. The trouble is, it doesn't work on a summon like all the other hole cards. And I checked the kanji, it's a real hole card. It's not some sort of weird translation thing. Galaxy trap trick deck list win. But not only that, it is a monster reborn card. Like I said, during your draw phase, if this trap hole thing is in your graveyard, instead of conducting your normal draw, you can banish this card and then special summon the XC monster that, that was killed. Okay, not only is this card a weird monster reborn card, it's just a weird card. It's an odd support card uh, for a very specific archetype, but not just that, a specific portion of the archetype, the extra deck monsters. It's a whole trap card, but not it doesn't work against a summon like every other one. And you can banish it from your graveyard to special summon a monster by not conducting your normal draw, which is awkward and annoying. If it was just banish it from your grave uh, as a spell speed two anytime you want to get the guy back, it'd be actually really, that'd be really, really solid. But as it stands, that effect is uh, a bit tacked beyond. Oh. Number three is Message in a Bottle. Message in a Bottle is a normal spell card, a la Monster Reborn. Ah, it's a real one. Target three monsters with different levels in your graveyard. Special summon them. Their attacks become zero and you negate out their effects. But here's the kicker. If you don't perform an XC summon in the turn after you used this thing, you lose 4,000 life points. Okay. I know that doesn't inherently seem like too big of a deal because one, life points don't matter, and two, you got three free bodies. So what is a free body? Let's look at an example. Of course you're gonna exceed summon. Their levels are all different, and if they had some sort of level modulation ability, you just negated them. Granted, nowadays you probably would just link summon and then just take the damage because who gives a shit, but it does mean late game, or mid game possibly when this card is live because you have a bunch of crap in your grave uh it might kill you <laughs> it might be a it might be like i activate soul charge reviving my family <laughs> all of them what you can do though is you can summon the three parts of uh, uh a huge revolution i'll let you guys make that deck list number two is variety comes out it's the spice of life, baby. This normal spell has the following effect. Return one synchro monster you control to the extra deck, then special summon tuner monster or monsters from your graveyard whose levels combined equal that of the synchro monsters that you returned. Also, you cannot synchro summon uh, the turn you use this card. So you, you, you can't use it the turn you played the monster. You gotta use it at least to the next turn, which is, means it's always dead all the time. That sucks. And I'm gonna let you guys think about this for a minute. What is weird about summoning tuner monsters equal to the level of a synchro monster? Well, traditionally, when a synchro monster is made, let's say Stardust Dragon, let's say a level 2 tuner like Plague Spreader Zombie, and a level 6 monster like Malicious? What's in your graveyard? A level 2 tuner and a level 6 non-tuner. Can you use this card? No. Which means, in order to do this properly, you need to like synchro summon a bunch so that you have multiple tuners from multiple synchro summons in your graveyard in order to actually resolve this card. Not only that, but uh, you can't synchro summon the card the turn that you use this card, so you can't then proceed to use all those tuners you've just summoned to then synchro summon. Not that you could anyway, because they're all tuners. I guess you could link summon. Uh, if something, uh, I guess if Boral Savage goes, goes south, but uh, you could put him back. It's not bad per se it's just very awkward and strange and without link summoning i'm not exactly sure what the card's point would have been and we do have an honorable mention for today double type rescue the reason why double type rescue is an honorable mention is because it's like a video game dual links exclusive card it's not a real card so honorable mention it is but it is a monster reborn type card and it is weird and i think we just got it in dual links too so that's that's fun you can only activate this when the monsters you control are of two or more different types and your opponent controls more monsters than you do Special summon a monster from your graveyard. This one's like the most unrestrictive with what you can get back from the grave, but like the most restrictive.
restrictive with being able to even use it. I love that this card is like, you need to control like two or more monsters of different types. Your opponent needs to have somehow more than you so you can get one free body you could have just call of haunted in. Not only that, but in Duel Links, the, 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 the game that this is currently relevant to discuss, can only have three monsters on board. So this only works in the very specific situation where your two monsters are different, your opponent has a completely full board, and you have something in your graveyard you'd even want to grab. That's specific and strange and frankly just that's not that's not good. That is not good. You'll never use it. We also have a dishonorable mention. Tendangle Delaney. Robert Delancey is a normal trap card with the following effect. When you take battle damage from an opponent's attacking monster while you have three Tendangle monsters in your graveyard with different names, you can destroy the attacking monster. And if you do special summon, uh, what the hell is this thing called? Tendangled Acute Cerberus from your extra deck. Basically, uh, this trap card allows you to perform a link summon of a link three beat stick when you have the what would be link materials in the graveyard, but requires an attack. That effect in and of itself isn't bad per se. I love that it can miss timing. That's real cute. But it, it, it does have a monster reborn effect, which is actually probably better than its, than its field effect. If you control no monster in your extra deck monster zone, you can banish this thing from your graveyard to spell just summon three Tindangle monsters from your graveyard. Ah, see? You put a face down, but I'm pretty sure Tendangles want to be face down, so that's not a problem. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> but it at least makes sense from a card design standpoint. And it is okay as a Monster Reborn card. Alright guys, before we get to number one, I just want to give a shout out to MetaMats. Use my code TROLLDEMENA at checkout in order to get 10% off your custom cloth playmat. These guys are really good to me. I love them. I love their products. So go check them out. All right, boys, number one, Magistry Alchemist. Frontier Alchemist is a normal trap card. That boy needs therapy. And oh boy, is it a doozy. Banish four hero monsters from your graveyard or face up on your field. Let's hope it's graveyard. Target one hero monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Ignoring its summoning conditions, that's a thing. If you banish an earth, wind, water, and fire monster, to use this effect, the monster that you summon's attack is uh, doubled. And negate the effect of all current face-up cards your opponent controls. But that, that's that's actually pretty slick. And you can only use one of it per turn. Like, you would ever be able to activate more than one. <laughs> that is a huge amount of resources to require. You're supposed to use this thing with Elemental Hero Electrum, I think, because that thing, that fusion thing also requires a, a mess of different attributes. And I think it counts as all of them too, or something. I don't remember what the thing, it's not very good. But I, I think that's the gimmick, so. You need, a hero. I need a hero. I think there's better hero support because uh, heroes are like the biggest archetype in the game. Uh, you guys have better options to summon one from your graveyard than this jank. But I do like the, the, the mass negate. I think that's pretty solid. And I suppose if you're making a dedicated Electrum deck, you got an interesting normal trap card to, to allow you to build a deck around it. But anyway, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed this one. This one was actually pretty fun because these cards are weird. If you guys want to get in on the list making action, link is in the description below to get into that Discord. Go through the, uh, the, the clicky entry stuff so you get the right permissions and then you can get into the uh, list help Discord. Thank you guys very much for watching the video. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Dueling takes both luck and skill. Show this by pressing the subscribe and notification buttons. Now, bear witness to these other Davinator 1212 videos. Oh, Dion. What is it, Master? It's time to apply the ointment. Uh, Come help me with this. I should have left with Ishizu. I can't reach. <laughs>